And thank you all for uh, welcoming uh, Nikki, uh, my colleague, and I here today. Um, we're really honored to be able to talk about the Naturalist Society. Um, uh, because uh, President Joan mentioned it to me, I thought I should let you know that we do wear our clothes. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. You know what? I thought that was films, so not a rope. If you don't mind, when I, when I was 20 and the first time I went to England, I stayed with an older couple. To me, it was old. They were probably 65. Um, and I stayed with them for a month, and I had a really good time. They didn't want me to leave. But when I left, I heard they were disappointed because they are naturalists. <laughs> which is what they call them in Britain, but that means they're nudists. <laughs> <laughs> and I just can't think they're stuck. That's all I think about. <laughs> We're really a group of nature enthusiasts. Nature's, wildlife photographers, and conservationists. So our mission is to foster interest in the natural history of the Fraser Delta to share and enjoy nature, and to promote environmental awareness and conservation. So Alexis uh, reminded us that we have been around since 1987, thanks to Linda White and a group of nature lovers who got together for a meeting, and Murray, who's still a current member and not our Canadian songbird, Anne Murray, uh, she attended those meetings and took on the role of the secretary and created the newsletter. 1997, the uh, Delta Naturalists became a registered society, which I happen to know is a very onerous process, so good for them, and a member of BC Nature. The casual bird outing started by Tom Bears, and uh, many of you uh, might know him, his uh, outgoing personality and and sense of humor, uh, and because of that, really attendance uh, increased in the naturalists, and maybe more interest then. Now today we have about 150 members worldwide. So we are nature-loving individuals, and we consider ourselves uh, citizen scientists even. Uh, we're passionate and curious, we're concerned about our environment, and we believe in climate change, embrace science-based evidence, we're lifelong learners, uh, mentors and educators, and our group is made up of folks with some very diverse and fascinating careers. So there are birds, there are, and look at where we live. We are, uh, how can there not be birds? We are in the heart of the Fraser River estuary where we see migrating birds uh, come and go uh, through the seasons. Um, we appreciate that, we love them. And we love that our snow geese land in our fields and are nourished by uh, the efforts of the Delta Farmland and Wildlife Trust that works with our farmers to, uh, to plant cover crops that uh, obviously provide benefits for the soil and to the farmer, but also uh, provide a food source for these snow geese as they spend their time here with us. We love hummingbirds. Who doesn't love hummingbirds? We're so blessed, really, to have a, a, a year-round hummingbird, the Anna's hummingbird, and uh, our little buddy, the Rufus, that shows up about March. Um, one of our uh, members uh, was so blessed to have a hummingbird nest in his backyard and provided this photo of a hummingbird with her two uh, little little ones, then you might see their beaks right under here. Wow. Uh, that nest is about an inch by an inch and a half, don't you know? I don't even know how they're even in this nest, to be honest. And they grow so quickly. Uh, within a week, those little devils have got feathers on them. And you know, a couple of weeks later, the mom can't sit on the nest because those babies are so big. We also want to make sure that we're taking care of them. Hummingbirds nest from December to August. So in the winter time, it's so critical that we put out our feeders and we make sure that they're clean and changed regularly. We want to make sure that we're supporting them 
those little birds are fed six times an hour. So in December, in January, and February, that nectar is critical to ensure the survival of these little birds. If you look at the BC Ferry Terminal, or even if you're driving down the 99 Highway, you're gonna see some herons. We've got one of the largest colonies right there at the terminal, and there's a photograph from one of our fabulous members up there. And I encourage you to look in your backyard. We've got so many beautiful backyard birds. They visit your feeder. Some sunflower seeds will do it. Um, I always use Merlin. Merlin is an app that you can download on your phone. Uh, stick that out in your backyard for 10 minutes, and you'll be absolutely amazed by how many birds that you're recording. Um, and then that kind of opens the door to being a little bit more interested in, in who they are. So the Delta Naturalist Casual Birds uh, uh, Group. So we all like to go for a walk and get out in nature. These walks are bird watching and just being outside. So you don't need to be a pro. You don't need to be a pro birder or photographer. Uh, you're just going to be with like-minded people and you're just going to be looking around and seeing things maybe you've never seen before. Um, these walks are led by a knowledgeable, passionate and curious Delta Naturalist member. I guarantee you'll walk away with five new things under your hat. Bring your binoculars. Dress for the weather. It's a rain or shine event. They go to the Twasson Ferry, Rifle Bird Sanctuary, Mount Baker, Serpentine Fen, you can see Centennial Beach, all around the Lower Mainland. Uh, after these uh, outings, the information, the photos and report is posted on our website. You don't necessarily have to be a member. Uh, why don't you try us out? Come along a couple of times. See if it's right for you. Maybe then you'll want to be a member. Tony? Yes? With that bird that we see here, I don't recognize it. That's a Stellar's Jay. Wow, its color is so different. Very yeah. vibrant. Is that a female? Nikki? No. Not no. Delta naturalists meet every month. Uh, we meet now by Zoom for our meetings and four times a year we have a social. Uh, that's not necessarily a, a, a formal meeting. Uh, it's a get together. Um, at all of our meetings we have speakers. Um, this past uh, month our social, uh, we welcomed David Hancock from the David Hancock Foundation. Um, David is a world renowned eagle expert and re-nests eagles um, and installs cams at eagle nests. If you visit the website, you'll be able to connect with those. There's a number of uh, eagle cams that are in this neighborhood. Um, David is a fascinating and amazing, really, storyteller. Um, but really, all of our meetings are fascinating with our speakers. Uh, many of our own um, naturalist members are avid travelers. In fact, a group has just re returned from Panama. So in January, I know uh, they'll be speaking and doing a presentation about what that trip involved and all the great times they had, a lot of photos, of course. Um, that was an organized trip by one of our members, but obviously people are traveling here and there all the time and love to share uh, what they found. Um, I might also just add, these posters of our every monthly meetings are created by one of our members, and if you find your way to our website, you'll see a slew of these uh, very um, artistic and lovely um, posters for advertising our meetings. A lot of time and energy goes into, into them. You might even be reading all about the Delta Naturalist through the nature notes that the Delta Optimist uh, publishes for us. These contributions are from DNS members and friends. Um, uh, maybe even recently you read about light pollution impacts on insects. Um, from Claire, Claire's someone that I met when I was volunteering doing some European green crab trapping, because we sure don't want those little guys in our waters. Claire is a uh, entomologist and an expert on insects, so she kindly put together this nature notes for us. But if you look down, you can see again some very 
interesting uh, topics, and you can see those probably from the Delta Optimist if you do an archive search, but also from our website. So community outreach, as you all know, is such an important part of being in your community. Um, I've taken on the rule as the outreach coordinator after my 750 years in nonprofit, uh, kind of like getting out in the community and talking to people about all the great things that we're doing. Uh, this past year has been full um, and not quite over yet, but the watershed, of course, that event is fabulous. It's also a great way to get into North Delta. Uh, and it's a fast and furious two-hour event, lots of fun. Metro Vancouver Landfill, that's a two-day event. I highly recommend that. Learn a lot about the landfill. Uh, the Semiamu Days in, in uh, White Rock Garlic Festival in Richmond, our own day at the farm this past Saturday. Uh, we did the Sun Fest earlier in August, and there's another event coming in October with Metro Vancouver called the Flashlight Mysteries on Dee's Island. We like to be talking about what we're doing. Uh, we also attract members and volunteers through this outreach. Um, and it gives us an opportunity to always be educating and informing. So our displays are set up to reach different age groups and uh, hopefully provide a little bit of fun. We've got our famous mystery boxes. So uh, sticking your hand in something unknown is all part of the fun. I can guarantee nothing will bite you or sting you. <laughs> One of the projects that you might have even read about uh, here in the Delta Optimist is uh, the Wildflower Meadow, Jackson Way. This, initiate, this project was initiated by one of our Delta Naturalist members who um, did all the seeding and uh, maintains the garden. Um, and now working with the city, we're considering two additional locations one in North Delta and one in Ladner. Um, and just as note, the city of Delta has been declared a bee city, so they want to encourage these kinds of projects. Um, so if you're thinking about turning your lawn into a wildfire garden, that might be just fine by them. Another one of the great projects uh, that we're into are the nest boxes. Uh, so this is a group of, I call them the retired guys, but I've been looking at a bunch of retired guys here. Um, and they build and install barn owl boxes and tree swallow boxes. So currently, they manage over 130 boxes around the Lower Mainland. And recently, they started to install the cams as well. So that's another piece for us. Uh, when we're going out talking to the public to be able to share uh, with everyone, you know, what's going on in those boxes and to see a little bit of nature in action. The tree swallow boxes are uh, along the same, and I'm able to use them in the displays when we're out into the community, uh, showing uh, people boxes that are um, uh, unsuccessful. Uh, and uh, maybe successful as well, and the differences. So people can understand a little bit, then a little bit about nature. Why would that nest be unsuccessful? Maybe a squirrel turned up, not too sure. Um, maybe the mom vacated for whatever reason. But those are the kinds of like, real life nature pieces of information that are um, you know, fascinating to others and, and to us as well. So uh, this is a little bit of a story here, um, but the Birds and Bio uh, Biodiversity Con Conservation Committee uh, has been working with the City of Delta to create a strategy. Um, uh, Delta is obviously um, very committed to um, protecting our birds and uh, biodiversity, um, and so uh, in February 2018, um, put together the strategy and works continuously with uh, the Delta Naturalists in future projects and considerations. Now this um, entire document is available on the City of Delta website, so I encourage you to, to look at it, it's quite extensive. One thing that we get pretty excited about is the City Nature Challenge. Um, this is an initiative um, that was actually started um, as a competition uh, between uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco, a couple of uh, naturalists or naturalists, and to just see 
what they could see in their backyard. And so uh, we have uh, three or four walks around South Delta that you can participate in and we walk around uh, nature areas and really take pictures. Um, part of this whole campaign is the iNaturalist app. I encourage you to download this app just anyway. It's a, a, a way to identify plants, um, bugs, birds, scat, you, anything that you find out in nature, you can upload it, your photo or the sound. It will also identify the sound. And I think, Nikki, it's a bot that might do the initial uh, identification and maybe a person uh, that comes on to verify that. Is that correct? Yeah, the program will take a stab at an identification and then someone in the scientific community uh, will come around, take a look at it and verify it yeah. to uh, upgrade the uh, research level. So pretty uh, fascinating stuff. And also a local um, expert on native bees from the um, BC Society, Native Bee Society of BC, uh, is one of, those, uh, one of those individuals. So it's nice to know that we have someone local and that there are actually real people that are looking at our observations. Uh, during the City Nature Challenge, you um, kind of sign up for this project, which is actually in the app, and then you just take pictures of anything wild, even those rotten Himalayan blackberries. They're wild, and that is part of this whole story. So it's really encouraging people to get outside, and maybe you have a competition with one of your Rotary members in another part of the world, because this is a global event, so there could also be a lot of fun there. Um, April 25th to April 28th next year are the dates for that City Nature Challenge, so um, keep an eye and join out. So some of the partners and friends that we have uh, in these parts, of course, BC Nature, of which we're uh, a part of. Um, Nature Kids BC uh, is a group of volunteers that uh, work just with kids, and they are all volunteers as well. There is a Delta chapter, uh, the City of Delta, of course, Delta Farmland and Wildlife Trust, our dear friends, the Cougar Creek Stream Keepers, um, our group, um, a Cascade Group, Friends of the semi Amu Bay Society and Bats and Birds Canada, um, amongst uh, many more. So volunteers, like you guys, we're looking for volunteers too, and, and for new members, bring people into our, our group and to help and to help it grow. Uh, lots of different opportunities, of course. Uh, you've got also special talent or anything in nature that you'd like to share. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, other opportunities out there, like I mentioned, European green crab trapping. Um, European green crabs are invasive species, and they will eat up pretty much anything they can find in our waters, push out native species, and make it difficult for our native ecology to grow. Um, so there's a group from the San Diego Bay, uh, Friends of the San Diego Bay, that um, coordinate this with Environment Canada. Um, this past summer, uh, Nikki and I went out counting bats. Um, that is done with the BC bats, um, and uh, probably maybe three or four different outings this past summer, we were counting female bats. So very interesting, uh, be ready for some mosquitoes. Uh, bats will not fly into your hair, just making that clear. Um, the other thing, invasive species poles. Uh, the City of Delta uh, has them. Uh, the Invasive Species Council of Metro Vancouver uh, will also initiate some polls. I think they did one at, um, at um, Pebble Hill. Um, and it's a good two hours to get outside. Cougar Creek Stream Keepers also, they're famous for doing invasive species polls. Um, the George Rifle Bay Bird Sanctuary. Um, if you are uh, up for volunteering, then for certain you want to get out for a walk. I was just there a couple of weeks ago and it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I went with Merlin, my bird ID uh, sound app, of course, because I'm just not astute enough to be able to identify what bird is what, but um, it definitely is fun. And again, once you understand the sound of the bird, you kind of look up and you see it, it makes it all the more fun. Um, uh, I've got here a membership brochure 
Uh, you can also go to our website and uh, look for that online as well. Um, uh, all everything I've talked about really is part of our benefits. Uh, you know the outings, um, uh, outreach events, uh, our meetings, uh, compelling uh, speakers, of course. Um, and we just love to see everybody getting outside and walking in nature. Um, you can reach out to us anytime through our website, deltanaturalist.org. So you'll also find there uh, these fabulous brochures that are here in front of you. They're available also as a PDF. Uh, talked about the Merlin app and the iNatural app. Uh, naturalist app. What a great way to start an introduction to uh, getting to know more about nature and what's going on around you. Sibley guidebooks are also very informative and feel free to follow us on our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube where you will find our presentations that have been recorded. So um, if you look at the website, pick one and uh, I guarantee you'll, you'll know more about garter snakes than you ever wanted to know about garter snakes. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions or 